In this video, I'll talk about 7 tricks that will help you improve the light in your interior and make your renders more photorealistic and physically correct. Light Sources Hierarchy A common mistake beginners make is that they set the intensity of light sources without a clear prioritization. Here's an example of the mistake and how it shouldn't be. In this case, we have the sun, which is clearly illuminating our scene. There is no way in life that an artificial light source will be brighter than the sun. In this case, they should be less intensive than the natural light source. To make the light source visually more visible, it needs to be made a little warmer. Okay, and now our brain understands which light source is primary and which is secondary. I want to show you the same thing with this bedroom. Here I have the goal of highlighting this area and highlighting this light source. So I'm going to make the general light dimmer and cooler. And I'm going to make the warm light source brighter. And now we have a clear prioritization in this render. Warm cold balance. I recommend you to balance the color palette of your interior with warm light sources. You can see a good example here in the reference. The fill light in this bedroom is a cool white light and it is balanced with a warm light lamp. You can also see what I'm talking about in this example. The pool in cold colors, which fills about half of the picture, is coolly balanced using warm light sources. This example isn't so beautiful, but it's great for showing what I mean. The main light is a ceiling fill light, which is a neutral light, and the secondary light source is different in tone. I'm sure the designer did this to balance the color palette of the interior. And let me show this on a specific project. We have a bathroom that is lit with neutral fill light sources that shine from above our room. Let me run an interactive render, and now I'm going to turn on the warm LED lighting behind the mirrors. And you can see how our interior has become more alive and more interesting. And one more example. We have a bedroom like this, which is now lit with cold fill light. Here the fill light is a corona sky. If you don't have the basic knowledge of lighting interiors in corona renderer, check out my free tutorial. The link is in the description. Let's see what changes if I enable this light source. And let me tell you right away how this is implemented in Corona Renderer. We have a model of a lamp. Inside this lamp is a small light source. Now I'm going to turn it on. But nothing has changed in the render. Because we need to change the material of our lamp. I open the material editor. In the material of the lamp, we need to check the thin shell checkbox and increase the translucency parameter. Also change the translucency color. Okay, we can already see the result now. To make this result even more interesting, I added an additional light source, which is larger than our lamp. I added the geometry of the lamp to the light source exception. I turn on this light source, and the light from the lamp became even more large scale. Okay, the overall rendering of the bedroom looks more interesting. Note that light sources should have hierarchy, but we will talk about this a little later. Shadow pattern. Sometimes it is a good idea to add shadow traces from some object, such as trees, on the light spot. Let's add this on our bedroom. I'll turn off the warm light source. I'll run an interactive renderer. I'm going to make Corona Sky a little more neutral. And now I'm going to turn on the sun. I'll change the intensity and size of the sun to make the light spot not so intense and the shadow line will be not so sharp. I'm also going to make the sun a little bit warmer. Now between the sun and the room, I'm going to add a plane with a tree. In the opacity slot of the material applied to this plane is this map. You can download the tree opacity map in the description of this video. And now I'm going to move this plane between the sun and the window. You can see the barely visible silhouette. To make them more obvious, the size of the sun should be reduced. 
There is the result, light accents. To control the attention of the viewer, you can use light accents to move the focus of the interior on any necessary object. And I will show it on the example of this kitchen living room. It is convenient to make light accents using rectangular light sources. Let's create a rectangular corona light. I turn this light in the window of the interior, turning it on, turning on the targeting and moving this light. Let's initially make sure that the viewer's attention is focused on the sofa in the foreground. To make it easier to control the light sources, you can turn on lights mode here. I move the target to the couch and place the light source plane something like this. I run an interactive render. In this light source, I will disable the occlude other lights checkbox. I'll raise the intensity value. I need to make this light source shine more concentrated. I use the directionality parameter for this. Let's increase it. After about 0.5, we can see that the light source shines more narrowly, more directionally, but its intensity has increased. Let's decrease it. We will slightly change the position of the light source to change the position of the light spot in space. And now our fake sun is shining only on the front of the interior, therefore separating the sofa from the rest of the room and visually highlighting it. Now let's make the viewer's attention move to the back of the interior, to the island. I move the light source targeting and move the light source itself. I'll work a little bit on the position of the light spot and I'll also work on the directionality and intensity. Okay, great. This is a technique you can use if you want to create a more atmospheric, more artistic render. And here, I want to talk about one very important detail. Here you can see a picture of the interior. In the real world, you can see that all objects have multiple shadows. At the leg of this chair, we see one more dark shadow and a second shadow, which is more transparent. Why is this happening? It's because each of the windows works as a separate light source, even though in the entire world where this interior is photographed, there is only one light source, the sun. That's why we see this effect. If you want your interior to look more photorealistic, you need to reproduce this effect. I'm going to show it with this example. Let's place the corona rectangle light, just like I showed in the previous living room example. I'm going to place the corona rectangle light and illuminate this island with it. I'll turn on the light source, turn on the targeting, and place the light source and targeting as needed. With the light source, I will also turn off occlude other lights, increase the directionality parameter, run the interactive render, make the source cooler. I will also turn off the visibility of the light source and its visibility in refractions. Now I'm going to reproduce the secondary shadows from our island and these two chairs. To adjust the sharpness of the shadow line with this kind of lighting, you can reduce rectangle light to its minimum values and increase its intensity. And now the shadow lines are sharper, but I'm still going to go back to the opposite position. I'm going to increase the directionality parameter a little bit to make the light source more narrowly focused. And now we're only lighting our island. This lighting method can also be used if you're, for example, rendering an advertising poster of a piece of furniture and you need to visually detach it from the context of your interior. Okay, now let's focus on the shadows from the chairs. And now I'm going to copy this light source. In copy mode, I'm going to make it less intense. I've set up two rectangle lights and let me turn on these light sources step by step using the Corona light mix. This is the first light source and it gives us a single shadow. And now I'm going to turn on the next light source and our light and shadows from the objects have become more varied. Here you can see the parameters of these light sources. In this interior, you can see that we have windows on different sides. If we light our interior with uniform light, this light will be crossed, it will shine to this side and to that side. And it always looks very bad, the interior and the space loses volume and you can see on the render what you get. 
I recommend setting the light so that it is unidirectional and has only one orientation. Thus, our picture will be clearly divided into light and shadow parts. I recommend using box to close one of the unnecessary windows. The lighting is already better. Our interior is illuminated only with the help of Corona Sky. And let me turn on the sun. And now you can see that our interior has clear boundaries of light and shadow, and for our eye, this configuration looks the most pleasant. How to properly set up the spotlights. Let me isolate a group of spotlights and show you what this should look like in practice. Inside each of the spotlights is a disk light source. This serves to create the glow of the spot itself. Underneath each of the spots, there are also disk light sources and they serve to create ambient fill lighting. The light sources within the spots are usually best set in a warmer shade and the fill light in a cooler shade. There is also an iOS profile applied to large fill light sources. Corona has its own built-in iOS profiles. Also, there are a lot of different packs with iOS profiles on the internet iOS profile is a special file that is loaded to the light source and thanks to it, the light source gets a certain pattern close to what you can see in real life with spotlights. Usually, spotlights shine brighter and more concentrated light towards the bottom of the room. This is what the light source looks like without the iOS profile and this is what it looks like with. You can choose different iOS profiles. Also, at large disk light sources, do not forget to turn off the Occlude All the Lights checkbox. You should aim for a frame of your render to be a combination of light and shadow, as you can see in these examples. If you follow this rule, which works in any fine art, your renderings will become clearer, more expressive, crisper, and more tasteful in terms of artistry. For example, in this render, you can see that we have a light area and a dark area, that is almost entirely in shadow. Here you can also see how we have a pretty clear light spot and the rest of the picture is in shadow. Here the artist has illuminated the bed with the help of the sun, thus bringing the bed to the foreground. And now we pay attention to this object in the first place and the render doesn't seem boring. Here also the artist has applied the framing technique. It is such a technique when we wrap the whole picture with dark parts and the light, an important part, to which it is necessary to pay attention, is further away and attracts more attention. And here, you can see a bad example of how not to do it. It would look much more favorable if the left and right parts of this render were dark, then we would pay attention to this area of the apartment. And with the help of Photoshop, I will show how it should look like in the good version. I spent half a minute on this sketch, but here you can see how I applied the framing technique. I darkened the side areas, which are not important for our attention, and slightly brightened the central part of the composition of our frame. And the picture looks much better and much more interesting. 